These are the players you want to see. Keep your eyes peeled, and I better not see anybody blink, because I swear to God you're going to miss it. No way! The passive's down! The defense breaks late, and he needs the kill with the second skill. Is it going to be enough here? Wait, he chose not to use second skill? I, I, he didn't, he didn't I, want to... I, I don't... He didn't want to do something. I don't think he wanted to boot. I don't know what well, the decision it making doesn't was. doesn't matter! He got him here! Right. He could actually go for third skill right now, drop all three units, does get the kill. And but ah! Taking down True Will. Okay, it looks like the Zoom is trying to get rid of the sustain. Wow. Oh, that's, that's, that changed that's pretty drastic. That's, a, that's insane damage, dude. <laughs> so that's, that's why it was pretty <laughs> Demolishing Masha's team here, taking round two. That was. That was insane, man. It does go for the detonate for a little bit of damage, finishing off the Etha as well. Second skill is going to be enough here with the gouge coming out, dropping two units. Ah! With bringing so much volatility in the form of Hell Ladies and Maximilian. The time between taking the turns from Zex is so telling. The gravity of the situation is setting in. It looks like Thompson is coming in hot to take that last spot for Sunday. Hello everyone and welcome to the grand finals of the North American sector of the America's Summit. My name is Evan and with me today, it's Seppi and Stoic. What's going on guys? Good morning. What's happening guys? Great to be a part of this once again. Great to see this handsome man all the way over there. Super excited for America's Summit. Are you looking at a mirror? Because you're the handsome one here. What's up everyone? <laughs> welcome to the America's Summit the best of the best and a lot of new faces in here right that's very true man and it really is the best of the best this time for the semi-finals and the grand finals by the end of today we're going to have the two people who are going to meet the two winners from our latin america sector at the finals later down the line we've got the semi-finals games the grand finals like we said top players here and we had a lot of upsets on friday didn't we stoic we really did. There was a lot of upsets here, but more excitingly, we have players that have not made it to, to like where they are. And I'd love to bring up like Apps as one of those people here. Brand new to the tournament scene, and here he is, cleaving his way to victory. So many memorable games from Friday, and this is the bracket that we've got based on that. The journey that we took in our semifinals is actually where we're going to be starting today. First match, starting off strong, it's Madream D versus Feroz. And then we got Thompson versus Apps. I got to see in the chat who you're rooting for. Who do you think those top two players are going to be? Seppi, do you have any favorites going into this? Oh, I'm not going to pick any favorites. You know, there's a couple of friends in here, but, you know, I'm a fan of the aggressive style of play. And we have a couple of players here that love cleaving, love some control cleaves. So I'm just excited to see turn one comps and to see if the other players can adapt to that. Yeah, that was probably the most unfair question I'm going to ask all day. Who do you favor <laughs> in this in this titanic matchup? But Stoic, I'm going to ask you nonetheless. Who's your favorite going into this? I mean, favorite going into this, I, I think most players are going to be afraid of Thompson here. Thompson is definitely a very, very scary player here. Like we brought up before, one of the only players from especially Americas to make it to a world final final uh, and, and, you know, not win it, but still, like, Thompson's the only player here to go that far. But that's nothing to, uh, to you know, to ever... Shake no, a stick there's at. no reason none of these players should be really afraid of that, because they're all here for a good reason. Getting there is half the battle, man. And we saw the prize pool that these players are playing for, so they have money on the line as well as the title. This is the first America Summit ever, so having that first title under your belt to go along with whatever legends you might hold, whatever America's Cup championships you might hold, is pretty huge. So we're very excited going into this. So Madream D versus Feroz is going to be our first game today. Look at all the folks that we're going to be seeing throughout. Like I said, Madream D versus Feroz. We got Thompson over there and Apps. There we go. Apps was absolutely dominating. And I'm a pun more than intended on that one, Stoic. He brought the Maximilian. <laughs> he was cleaving folk, gave him no option. Even if they banned the Maximilian, they were going to get control cleave. Now, do you think that he's going to be able to get away with that same strategy going into this? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I've had the chance to look at uh, Madream D's runes before, 
in Madrid, he might be one of the fastest players out there. We're talking well over 300 speed, multiple set, violent will stuff happening here. So like, I can't even imagine what his Swift stuff looks like as well. Like madrimbi has got nothing but rune quality here. And that might be like what it takes to get over apps here. Whether it's having the thickest of units or the fastest of boys. Like madrimbi has got, got a leg in every area. That's a really good comment. Uh, the interesting thing too, Stoic, is that Firaz is known for using some niche units and counterpicking in a very effective way. So I want to really see if he prepared very well to that turn one fast play style and if he can, you know, withstand damage and draft really well. Yeah, let's see if it's enough to take down that insane rune quality that Stoic so aptly put is not good, not great. It's amazing going into this. I'm very excited for what Firas has in store. These players are getting ready. And like last time, guys, we're going to be doing best of three the whole time today. So we got best two out of three for the semifinals and the finals. And we'll also have a third place match to decide who's getting that third place prize pool. Here we go, guys. Round one, Madrim D versus Firas, the grand finals of the America Summit, North American sector. Here we go, Let's guys. See yeah, let's see if they're gonna fight for a very interesting picks. Who would you favor in here as a first pick, Stoic? As a first pick here, I feel like Oliver can't help but you know be in that realm right now. Just locking in that 33 speed lead just seems really, really powerful. I don't know if Madrimi's gonna try and dig at uh, Faraz and try to take things away from him, but it looks like these guys are gonna be really quick and they know exactly what they wanna take here. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's either gonna be Wano Ryu or the Oliver. The speed lead, uh, I really like that he got the 33 and on top of that, the Carnal, the Fire Bison that is really, really strong right now. Um, and interesting counter picks with double Oracle, Raha super strong with the heal, some sustain, and the speed buff. So when I see this Water Ryu being first picked by Madrimbi, that's definitely knowing your opponent here. I think the Water Ryu has better synergy with the things that Fras is going to be bringing to the table, and that's exactly why Madrimbi took this unit. But that doesn't mean you leave that Oliver open. You have to lock in that unit, and that's why Fras ended up taking that here. And I like this little bit of a change of draft here for Fras. He's going to be taking that Mo Long, which definitely says that fifth pick might alter something to favor a Mo Long style draft. Very, very interesting. He's trying to just take one unit off the board, a lot of damage. The question right now is, does Madrim D go full turn one? Yup, that's what he did. Double speed lead, another starter. Does that tell you that he's either gonna ban the 33 or the Robo? What do you think over here? I mean, both players are playing for turn one with the style that Faraz brought to the table here with these Robos and such. So I would say the speed lead would get banned out on yeah. Faraz's side of the field. Doc Robo getting banned out from Madrim D though. Very interesting drafts here. Very, very interesting. I really like McGreensy's draft. He has a lot of immunity in here. Let's see, what food, see what happens indeed. Big strips coming up for McGreensy. A little bit of attack bar pushback as well. Only one stun's going to happen here from that Juno, and that's going to be on the Fire Robo. Yeah, now he has the opportunity to put silence on everyone and lands it, Stoic. Oh my god. Yeah. Does he have Everything enough damage silence. to get through this deck team? That's super rough to get everything silenced like that. Fidas needs to get some skills up. He needs to get some violent procs here. I'm not too sure how this uh, Mo Long is ruined. I want to say it's probably going to be ruined up on violent as well. But we definitely need to see some procs if Fidas wants to kind of get out of this. And he is going to get it. So we're going to get skill two popping out here. Unless he wants to try and stun everything up with the third skill, knowing he doesn't have that other skills up with other units. But he does go for that skill two. I really like how beefy that comp on Faraz's side is. Even though he lost turn one, got controlled, silenced in, there's not enough damage to kill them through that silence. And now almost everyone is off silence. If the Molong procs here, oh. no problem. Oh man. But that's one of the biggest procs right here. When you see that pro pop out in that <laughs> skill three from being stunned into a skill three, that actually might be a game ender right there. All that work Faraz was putting in there, trying to get rid of one of those units being the pro, knowing it was going in. Uh, going to be able to heal up his team is absolutely devastating right now. Keep in mind, both those Robos, not units that are known to be very, very thick here. These units can drop very easily. And you can see Madrim is going to keep pounding away at that Fire Robo. It's not going to be here much longer. Oh, that was probably the proc of the game, Stoic. Like you talk about, Violent is not only amazing on offense, but also on defense. Sometimes it might take you out of some very difficult situations and bring you right back into the game. Yep, 100%. One Violent Proc is able to either be on defense, offense. It doesn't really matter. You're getting the additional turn is just so impactful when it comes to a turn-based style game like this. Mo Long is going to be able to drop the Praha here, but it's really not going to be enough here. 
But Ash just really needs to think about his next match and how he needs to worry about, you know, units potentially like Kantos losing the uh, Water Ryu. I'm expecting Faraz to probably be first picking the Water Ryu and potentially banning out uh, a unit like Kantos. Good point, Stoic. Now is a moment to think of strategy. And do you think he would rather, let's say on my Z side, pre-ban the Water Ryu so Faraz doesn't get it? Or does he already have a set plan for another strong unit? Well, Faraz is going to have first pick going into this round number two with him in Madream D. He's definitely going to be taking that watery, but I'm curious. Does Madream D go out of his way to pre-ban a unit like that, knowing Faraz might want to take it? Who knows? It'd be very, very interesting. And that would definitely showcase a little bit of that uh, um, tournament play coming out of Madream D, having so much experience under his belt here. We'll find out very shortly. Let's see. Yeah, and he did pre-ban it. He doesn't want Firaz to play with that water Ryu. Evan, what would you like to see from Firaz's side to adapt against this again? No water Ryu, no 24% no speed lead to combo with that card. I love slamming down the Oliver for that first pick slot, similar to what was done last time, but he got banned out ahead of time. If he wasn't deciding on pre-banning the Pontos, then I would have loved to see an Oracle draft, something along the lines of like a Juno or Praha, so that way he'd have a strip option to remove everything. But since he took the liberty of pre-banning it, I think that he's a little bit more in line to do that Bruiser strat again. Interesting. And, and another question now for Stoic, since we haven't seen a lot of reset from the Dream Z side, maybe a late Abelio pick for Firaz to try to you know, cut in and bring back the match. Sounds like, like an interesting thing against the super powerful <laughs> dark unit. I, I mean, Abelio sounds like a fantastic pick right now. We've seen this from Madreemd. What I think Madreemd is going to be drafting here is just four thick boys and girls, of course. And that Dakoni Musha is something that Fadas is probably already thinking about banning out here. Or just like, can he bring enough to survive? Like. I, ooh, wow, all right, Madrid B is going to be changing it up. We're going to see a win Robo. Oh, and a Nikki. That is, it's just so much volatility mm. in, in Madrid B's draft right now. That is a lot Musha of damage. A mm -hmm. Yep. I would love to see an Abelio right now. No reset on Madrid B's side. The Fire Robo, how strong do you guys think that is in this draft right now? Uh, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I yeah. will say I'm not a fan I, of this Fire Robo. Say, I don't think that's the it's unit a little to turn forced. this thing around here. A little forced uh, in this trap. Does I that tell say. you that he needs to ban the Onimusha right yep. now? Ooh, it is the no, tablo, no. The actually. second he laid down the tablo, man, he laid down that tablo. That was the instant ban. Faraz did not want to see that. Oliver, of course, getting the ban here. HP leads for both players. Now this match is technically supposed to like go on a little longer, where we we, you know, we get a little bit of like here or there. But the the, the problem is the stack Onimusha. Once we watch the stack Onimusha pop off. Things are going to get really ugly, because here we go. Nikki's going to give the attack buff. This is going to be a ton of damage there. Look at all the additional damage come out. This second skill needs to push back this Dako, and he must stop this unit from dealing a ton of damage. You got a little oh. bit of attack bar back here. Oh. He needs this is the, the Rexus Assault to land. Oh, oh he's able to take no. that unit down. This just turns everything around for Faraz. This could really work out. He needs a defense breaks to land. Third skill's going to happen here. A lot of damage going towards the Juno as well. Juno does heal up a lot, and this is not a unit that can... Uh, can't it, can it solo here? Can the Juno solo here? I guess is the question. This is very interesting. Now I'm understanding that Fire Robo pick. It's probably the MVP with that big pushback. Like you said it. If he didn't get it, he couldn't have sniped the Onimusha. Yep, that Onimusha would have wiped the floor with Faraz there, but... We're, it's going to come down to the Juno right now, and I think one of the scariest things for this Juno is probably going to be this uh, uh, Fire and Bison with the second skill. And I mean, there is a little bit that, uh, of damage, and of course the attack for pushback happening here, so we might be able to nail it. The thing is, all these stuns and defense breaks and provokes are going to be coming out. It's just going to give this Juno so much potential to be able to solo this match. Yeah, feeding her a lot. He needs a little bit of an opening. He needs that Carno back up because she's dealing a lot of damage to the Molong and a big stun over here. Oh my oh. god. Oh. But that's a brilliant proc though. He gets a big second skill off and it's gonna heal up from that stun here. He needs to see more despair stuns and that was definitely a cry uh, for help there. When you see a second skill go out like that and not receive any despair stuns, we're gonna see more additional damage come out with the second skill and there you have it. Oh no, it doesn't drop it there! <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, Provoke's gonna be landing. Yeah. Oh, he stuns it though! Hold on, if there's this oh, stuns that come out, this is gonna be absolutely insane. He has second skill, and that should be enough to drop it there. Faraz stays in the round here, taking round number two against Madreemd. That was so you funny to watch at the end there, especially because technically speaking with the attack bar reduction, he should have 
had that pretty easy, but Madream D's runes, keeping, keeping the additional damage on the artifact too. I mean, he was just dishing out so much on the Molong. Amazing draft. Gotta call it out, guys. This Fire Robo surprised me. I did not expect it to be the MVP pushing back, guaranteed that the Animusha didn't have a chance to play in this game. Yeah, at the same time, I feel like the Fire Robo was a little scary. I mean, the Fire Robo worked out for him. He was able to push back the Dark Animusha from, being, you know, absolutely being his entire team getting destroyed here. But at the end there with the Juno, Juno potentially had lots of ground to uh, to solo there. There was, uh, I think, two provokes that didn't land from the Fire and Bison, but the stuns popping out from that Fire Robo, the Fire Robo didn't have enough additional damage to finish off the Juno when it was low. It ended up, of course, working out in Faraz's favor, but I want to see a little bit more additional damage coming towards this uh, Fire Robo for Faraz here, and obviously that's something that he just has to work towards. Really good point, Stoic, but I love the adaptation. Faraz says, this is the decisive match. I am not going to let you be comfortable and have the water read. So he pre bans it, and now Madream D has to adapt, but at the same side, Faraz doesn't have the Oliver to be banned, and they are going to swap a little bit of the play styles. Ooh, so God come back. I really do, and I love that word that you just used, adapt, because Faraz is definitely known to adapt to most of his drafts here, and that's exactly why Faraz is such a good player, and you see him, you know, in tournaments uh, like so, and in previous SWC prelim preliminaries as well. Like, Faraz is a fantastic job of adapting, and I think this is a great example when you see the free bands come out here. Oliver Water, were you getting banned out here? And I think these are both uh, bands that both players, I don't think we're expecting to see here. So both players mm -hmm. are going to be adapting here, and we see a Nana draft coming out of a Dream D, and this Juno, once again, is going to be coming to the table, and I think this Juno's only here because of how much Fadas plays this uh, Fire and Bison. Good point. Uh, the interesting thing is Firaz is bringing double reset, so not too worried about the Praha. Do you think which is the monster right here that should go for the ban on Madream D side? There's a couple units that can be, you know, very troublesome for them to kill. The Juno especially looks, you know, jumps at the end. Yeah, so the TN Lang's 100% going to get the ban here, but I do think Sekhmet was potentially going to be a ban, but I think uh, Faraz mm -hmm. is now in position to be banning out that Dark Onimusha. We're seeing a Nana draft here, where Dark Onimusha's crazy volatility, if he's able to kill things, obviously granting lots of orbs for uh, Madrin D's side of the field. Unless he bans out, oh, doesn't ban out the Nana here. He is going to be banning out the sustain, but I think the one issue here yeah. is going to drop... Madrimbi has a very well working team right now. There's good synergy, and of course, the segment is going to get banned out, uh, which was a potential unit, but obviously, Tian Lang, Tian Lang can be very, very dangerous, but we'll see what happens when we get into round number three. Oh, can this. My god, he hit all the reduction, the death break coming in, stun. This is going to be a lot of damage from the Onimusha. One HP on the Tian Lang. Yeah, that's exactly what I was kind of hoping to see a uh, Dark Onimusha ban here because it's just too much volatility. And that's really, really scary to have to deal with, especially when he's trying to synergize with the Nana. I think you ban out the Dark Onimusha and then you just go for the long run. Obviously, the Praha was going to be a very big issue. And I think Fadas knew that his segment was going to be banned out here. So he could throw up the shields if he really wanted to, but I just don't think Fadas is in a position to win this match anymore. Yeah, that was a really well tuned team. The death break coming in, a lot of damage on his side and so many orbs. So difficult to bring it back without death break on that side, but M. Bison's gonna try his best. Yeah, I mean, when you see three orbs pop out there, usually that's a bottom left mm -hmm. quit. That's very, very tough to come back from, but Fadas, I think he's just enjoying his time right now, letting everybody know they should probably subscribe to uh, World Arena Podcast, you know, so on and so <laughs> forth. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing is just one long World Arena podcast ad. <laughs> exactly. I mean, beautiful additional turns here. I think Farax needs... Uh, Fara uh, yeah, Farax needs... Uh, Farax. I keep saying Farax and Farax the same word. It's the same word. He needs a whole lot more to try and come back there, but that's just not going to happen. <laughs> what a win from Madrim D. It seemed to me that there was a slight misread in the pick ban phase with the... No, no ban on the Dark Oni Musha. I think he thought for sure that Tian Lang was going to get banned, and frankly, I did too. Yeah, I, I think he was prepared to ban that segment, like uh, like Stoy talked about, and then the the Tian Lang came in the end. But with the Oni Musha staying on the table, too difficult. Also, the rune quality is crazy. You talked about it before the matches started. His Juno was hitting over 3K. 
I don't think my Juno hits, uh, well, Prada. I don't have a Juno, but I don't think my Praha hits over 3K even in like 70% <laughs> increase. No attack. way, no way. I, and I, I remember watching that the first game where it's like the Juno just hitting the Molong. It, it was it's so many additionals. And it's like, you know, Juno is not supposed to have that easy of a time up against a, a attack bar reduction and and more. So that was that was pretty difficult. Stoic, what did you think of those games? I mean, I, I like that third game uh, the most, to be honest with you. For uh, Honestly, just for, for Madreemdy here, because I think in Madreemdy's case, Madreemdy brought a very, very safe team. When he first picked that Nana, I really wish that Fras was going to signal, try to, you know, try to gauge like what kind of draft he was going to be bringing here. And I think uh, Madreemdy was going to be playing the long run. When he drafted the Nana and basically both Oracles there, I think that was going to be enough. So even if the deck when Musha did not make it into the match, I think um, Dreamby was going to be feeling pretty comfortable with all that additional damage coming out of the first skill, gaining so much attack bar. I mean, yeah. you saw how much damage that uh, Juno was, was putting out there. And I would honestly see with the rune quality that um, Dreamby has, that Pra was probably going to be probably going to be putting out similar damage. I can't remember the kind of damage in the previous matches we saw Praha in, but I'm assuming that the damage was going to be very comparable to the Juno. Oh yeah, and, and it was a, a really damage. quick. Yeah, it was a really quick pick on both oracles when you saw the Wusa, and then the Wusa was suddenly pretty useless because there was a lot of strip on his side. Then the control from the Chung Fung and a lot of damage. Uh, I would have loved to see a similar draft to Game Two, where Faraz surprised everyone with that Robo outsped, controlled the attack bars, and kind of just rendered that Onimusha useless. But in this time, when you give the opening for the Onimusha to do damage, it's really hard to come back from it with a Nana by its side. Yeah, that's a very good observation there, Seppi, with the Wusa. Yeah, poor Wusa came in there, but there was not a lot that he could offer considering there was two full team strips available presented in the pick ban phase, despite one of them being banned. Like, it was it, it was a tough spot for Feroz to come into. And I, uh, to be fair, I did actually, I like the cigar at the forefront. I would have loved to see a little bit more attack bar control in there, like you said, going for turn one to wrap us up. So Madreem D is going to be one moving on. He's going to be moving forward. Unfortunately, Feroz is going to stick, be going to stick back. Uh, for the third place match. Our next game is one that I know that a lot of people are looking forward to. It's Apps versus Thompson. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a very interesting match here with Apps and Thompson. I mean, we watched Apps absolutely cleave every single opponent, and that's not something you often see in the tournament scene. It really is crazy that, you know, Apps got here just through cleaving, but I will say Thompson not is exactly the kind of person that you want to cleave here. Thompson's known to be very, very quickly, you know, very, uh, very quickly, uh, a very, very quick, kind of similar to how Madrindi has a lot, a lot of uh, 300 plus sets, but I believe uh, the swift side of Thompson can be very, very fast as well. So I am expecting Thompson to have a great answer to the cleave, but I'm also expecting apps to, to take a different course here. And that's a good yeah, that's question. Right. So like, what would you do if you were Thompson? Would you try to outspeed while well, knowing that he has super high quality or just try to counter Cleave? I know that Evan is a big fan of the counter Cleave. I mean, who who really knows? Thompson uh, is someone who prepares for his opponents. So I'm pretty sure with uh, uh, watching the previous matches with Apps, like Thompson already was trying to, you know, put something together. He's got lots of LD depth here to choose from. We've already seen him use uh, Gianna in the past. So, like, there's even a chance we might even see a Swift Gianna at a Thompson. I know he, he's not a fan of, of swapping his brilliant Violet set off of his, because it's like a 300 plus Violet will uh, Gianna. So I, I'm sure this, oh, this Gianna, it's still viable as, as violent, but if he swaps us out onto Swift, I think that's something Av probably has to worry about. <laughs> I'm just not too sure Thompson would ever swap his violent set off that Gianna. <laughs> I wouldn't. If I had a 300 speed vial will set for a Gianna, I don't think you could get me to take any runes off that thing. <laughs> yeah, Thompson's got a huge box to pull answers from and a lot of history. He's got some of the most tournament experience out of anybody in this whole thing, the whole bracket. Like he's been in front of people at the America's Cup, the World Finals, like you said, Stoic. So, Seppi, with all that in mind, how would you like to see Thompson potentially counter uh, Apps' cleave if he presents? Yeah, I would. since he knows kind of what comp is coming on, I would like to see something surprising and both fighting for speed. Like we talked about, Thompson has a very deep box, and I just want to see who's faster, you know? Who's the fastest? We find out on game one if the other one loses, they have to adapt, and we have to see some different drafts, because if by any chance, Apsi's comp continues to work. This, these are going to be some fast and fun matches. 
Yep, well, we'll find out the direction that he chooses as we get into this very first match between Thompson and Apps. Free bands coming out right now, and this is going to speak volumes here at what uh, uh, how they how they want to start out this draft. Are we going to see Maximilian or not? That is the big question, Evan. Are you a fan? I am a huge fan of the Maximilian. I like anything that presents big damage. We're not seeing it. He already pre-banned. You can tell Thompson was like, I was in the very same tournament he was. I know all the tricks that he's got up his sleeve. Yeah, these are two yeah, I think very, really important very... Pre-band. Uh, the question right now is, are we going to see also... Ooh, very high base speed picked here, but no water Ryu yet. Yeah, not just yet, but you can see Apps. Looks like he's still going down that same road right now. We're going to see that 28 speed lead. Wool Young come out with an Ethna as well. Apps definitely says he wants that turn one, and I think this is full investment right now. Interesting. Now we see the Gianna plus a 24%. Uh, Evan, would you keep going the route of trying to outspeed Thompson right here or kind of swap for something else a little bit different? Because he's so deep into it, I would potentially just, I would I would try. And it, I think Apps would be kind of hesitant to change up his strategy from that first bracket that we saw on Friday so much going into this. Thompson is really ahead of the curve here because I believe that Apps enjoyed taking that water puppet master, if I'm not mistaken, in the last one too. So yeah. he not only banned the Maximilian, but he also took one of Apps' ruined units. Now the Juno coming out in the end, the question is, does he fall for the bait or does he ban the highest base speed monster on the table? I mean, there's two speed leads out here for Thompson, the former Pontos, mm -hmm. and that Neftus. I knew that Neftus was going to be coming out here. But I think the Juno definitely is going to bring a lot of volatility right now. I think if Thompson lets the Wool Young through, that is very confident in his speeds here. Gianna's going to be getting mm -hmm. the ban. And then, of course, this Juno is going to be getting the ban. I think the Juno is going to be very volatile mm -hmm. when you have units like Neftus on the field. A lot of control. Is it going to be Triton turn one? No, well, let's find out. We're getting into this match right now between Abs and Thompson. Triton kicking things off here. Gonna see that third scale come out and not push back the Wool Young. And that might have been the only unit that Thompson really wanted to push back here, and he didn't get it. <laughs> now let's see if the Puppet 2 comes in and double freeze Evan. Now the Etna will have a big opportunity to get boosted and try to stun someone. Let's see if she can make good use of that. Unfortunately, Pontos is going to go first. That still leaves her the opportunity to skill three and steal some stuff. So she probably, oh, oh my goodness, the deny on the silent stoic. It didn't matter though. He had the Neftis coming in with the skill too. land the defense break. So right now, Thompson's got everything on the field that he needed. He's trying to get a silence here to lock down this Ethna. Does have the two turn silence as well. There's no cleanses coming out here. Right now, Thompson's sitting pretty at the moment and he can right now pick away the units that he wants. He doesn't have to, uh, to deal with. And it looks like Ethna is going to be that first first unit that um, uh, Thompson's going to look to get rid of. So much damage coming on from that Neftis. Did you guys see that hit on the death break? Yeah, that was That's a, a weird amount of damage, damage coming from a skill one. <laughs> from... <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be really difficult. Robo as well. Really difficult to come back from this because both these comps are not super tanky. They're both squishy. He needs strips. No strips. Ugh. Yeah, definitely a lot of damage coming out here. I think Thompson just showcased how fast he really can be here. And that's not something Apps was clearly uh, prepared for. Uh, I, I don't see Apps really coming back from this. These heal blocks are really, really big in a form of like Wool Young being your only unit to try and clap back here. And that's not what's happening. You need the attack bar pushback. He needs to land all stuns here. And it even gets resisted. I don't know how this Pontos is ruined, but I would assume maybe it has a little bit of resistance on it. We'll find out as we get into number round two between Thompson and Apps. Mm. We're going to have to see something real different from Apps. I think he's going to have to climb a little bit out of his comfort zone uh, and try to d dig a little deeper into his ruined units against Thompson. Because like you Thompson, because like you called at the forefront of this, mm -hmm. Thompson's not one to fall for the same strat that he's seen twice. Yeah, and very interesting pick. Uh, and now we're going to see, is he going to pre-ban it? Since he knows that Apps can get Maximilian this time, so he doesn't get the full comp. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Three bands the Wool Young. Yep, three bands locked in. Wool Young, and I believe that's the Water Puppeteer down there. Apps mm -hmm. has first pick here. I'm not too sure what he picks here besides potentially like an Oliver, but I, I know Apps isn't a fan of drafting that Oliver, and that looks like it is going to be the first pick that Apps is going to take away. 
Yeah, 33% is so strong, which tells us still going to fight or turn one. Does Thompson abides to it? Oh, and steals double Robo. We've seen a lot of oh Robos my goodness. today, friends. The Robo Gaming. Do you guys remember that game where we saw all? We saw three Robos represented in a pick ban phase. We almost had three Robos in a game. It's looking like he's trying to bring back that time. I don't know about ever turning my nose up at a 33% speed lead on Oliver there, Stoic. Why doesn't Apps like playing with Oliver? Uh, he doesn't like playing with Oliver because the things that Oliver is known to do, and that's to take multiple turns, be extremely toxic. So he's not a big fan of drafting it himself. But obviously, when it comes to a tournament with money on the line and you know bragging rights, I think he can make an exception. It's my favorite reason. That's my favorite thing about Oliver is how toxic he be. Well, I don't have one. Yeah, Stoic, how are you? Uh, how are you feeling about uh, the Gyo draft from Apps as well? Look at that. I mean, she's a name that will be remembered, Evan. That's for sure. Gyo coming out for Apps. We're gonna see two of the picks coming out of him. Dude, Thompson just bringing more heat here. You know, I didn't. I completely forgot about the Han, and now that we see Han and the Dark Robo and potentially a Gianna coming out as well, I think he needs to lock in a regular speed lead. To be honest with you, we're probably gonna see that Neftis coming out one more time for uh, Thompson. But Apps has as two picks here, and I think he's got to really think about this last pick. If we see a Juno, Apps took a great guess at knowing that it's probably gonna be a Neftis here. I really want to see the Abelio, but he kind of comes back and gets some speed on the table. Uh, I really like the adaptation with the Molly, but there's a lot of damage on Thompson's side. If he wants to just get another speed lead and then ban the fastest unit on Apsay's side, I think he's very comfortable. But I don't know, triple, qu qu actually quad wind well, on Apsay's side. To be honest with you, if, if he just wants to know that his first four units are locked in, he could draft the Douglas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. He just drafted the Douglas. Oh, Dang we it. knew that, that was a play it. Yep. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the dog oh, like a stew in there. Look it's at, it's banned, it. dude. It's banned. You have no it has to, to be. ban it out there. That's a great call. God. Force ban. Yeah, he's, he's, it's a force ban, 100%. 33 speed lead coming up for Apps here. He does have a team that wants to go first as well. We'll find out here and see who's going to be the fastest because that's a very big leader skill for this Doc Robo here. And um, that Doc know. Robo is going to be taken turn one as well. Oh, Can the Gio? Ooh, puts it on the Han. Is he gonna go for it? Even he yes, does go he for it. Care. What an Ooh. animal! He goes to the defense oh break, lands it on top of the Chung Fong. <gasps> he does have the cleanse though. Choose the cleanse up the defense break, gets the additional turn, healing up the team. Looking very good for Apps right now. Able to get his team kind of back online, minus the, the despair mm -hmm. sun on top of this uh, Oliver. I really like the Molly pick. I mid to let game it favors him a lot, and the Gio with the Molly just brings a lot of consistent annoyance to the other team. Can he land it once again? Yes, sir. That is practically a uh, dead hog now with the reset. Yeah, that's a really big stun there going on top of the Narsha. Narsha was going to be fit to remove some units from the field. And of course, that Chung Pung is going to be dropping now. But Oliver, he's got all skills online. And I think if Abs gets the discount on the Narsha, he's going to be looking a lot better. Yeah, I really like the pickup of the Molly right here. It gives him a lot of opportunities for misses on the other side. Continues the Gio and Molly combo of very, very annoying units that just refuse to die. Yeah, no stun's gonna be coming out here. He really needs to drop this Oliver because if he drops the Oliver, I think Thompson's gonna be in a very good position right now. But Nasha is gonna get dismounted here. And once again, despair <laughs> stun on top of that. Oliver drops that unit. Apps! Finally clapping back here with Thompson. I love that adaptation, that change in the draft. Like we said, it opened up for the Fire Ryu, but he was happy with the four units he was going against. Oh my god, the damage from the Robos. Oh, it's it double stun as well. All the dots coming out here. We're going to see more damage coming through this third skill with additional turns popping out as well. Oh my god, both units are looking so low. Is any violent procs happen here? It's going to be devastating for Abs. It is a lonely Molly right now. Oh my God! Oh my Look at those God. artifacts. Stoic. <laughs> How much damage coming from those Robos? That is insane, dude. Thompson taking down Abs. Holy cow! Holy cow! With the Robo Gaming victory, that that was so Thompson, man. But I loved Abs's counterplay. I really liked the team that he found. He was he was looking for he was looking for some kind of answer in his box. Abs was, and what he pulled out was so much fun to watch. I love the Molly Gyo combo. 
and it seemed like he had everything going well, but those two robos together were too much for Molly, huh, Seth? This is impressive, to be honest. The damage that these Robos put out, I was not expecting that to happen. I thought that the Gio and the Mali were gonna take it home. Great adaptation and draft by Apsi. Congrats, amazing, but you're going against the former America's Cup champion, one of the best players in the world, and it's very, very difficult to go against. Oh yeah, but those it, additional, it really those is. artifacts I mean, were absolutely crazy. Go ahead, they, they were, they were just so much additional damage popping out there. I mean, that that's just one of those moments of just, you know, your opponent has insane rune quality. He's got unit depth as well. Uh, I think we saw it once because I, I don't think Apps was in a position of watching uh, Thompson take two units of his when the Wind Robo and the Dak Robo were taken. And you could tell Apps paused and there was a little bit, little bit, a little bit more time put in the draft than his previous drafts before. And I think that was uh, on, honestly a game changing moment for Thompson because I really don't think Apps thought that Thompson was going to be digging into his box and taking two four star units like that. Uh, so I think that's where that, that change of pace came in. I can tell you, my Robos would have not won that matchup. <laughs> so congrats, Thompson. <laughs> nice farming those artifacts, man. Beautiful draft from both sides. I think this was like a, a very, very balanced game. It came down to, you know, farm and details. Yeah, farm and details, farm of mice, right? Yeah, not a lot of people could say that their Robos would be able to stand up in a situation like that. And don't worry, folks, if you wanted to see more of both Theros and Apps, we still have a third place match coming up after the semifinals, before the finals, to determine who our third place is going to be. So I think now that we're through, that's what we're looking forward to next, fam. So we just got through the semifinals, and our tiebreaker match again is going to be between Theros and Apps. So if you enjoyed watching those two players fight, fear not, you're going to see more. And then our grand finals are going to be Thompson versus Madrindi. And that's why we love the America Summit, guys. Stoic, you and me were talking about this on Friday. It's like you got the best players playing off season for a new title right now, like Thompson Madrindi. I don't even know where to start with that one, man. That's a battle of rune quality, man. That's a, that's a very, very crazy match here. And I think both players uh, have, have great viability to, to, to win this match. So it's going to come down to who prepared for each other more and uh, uh, how well they draft. The draft is going to be very, very important between these two. Yeah, that's right. But looking back towards what we're up against right now, which is our third place matchup. Seppi, we just watched Apps and Feroz play in their games right now. Who do you favor going into this based on what you've seen today? I really like Apsi's drafts. I'm very impressed by how he adapted. So I'm curious to see if everything's gonna go through, if he's gonna get his team on the first match or if he's gonna have to go deeper into the box and change strategy. So very curious to see that. That's the one I'm favoring. But once again, Faraz did really well with the Molong and the Fire Robo. Maybe he pulls a trick out of the bag. We'll see. Yeah, pull something like that. And also, we didn't get to see much cigar action in that last game when Frost pulled it out. And that's one of my favorite, most wanted units. So it's like, I hope that he, I hope he doubles down and tries to bring that same draft again. And everybody in chat, I want to remind you all that today's America's Summit Grand Finals is brought to you by the Los Angeles Meetup. So if you're on Twitch, you can use command LA Meetup to register for that. It's going to be on Saturday, April 22nd. So if you haven't gotten the chance to come to a meetup this year yet, let this be the one. The LA Meetup is always so much fun. And you'll see some of these folks there, actually, because I know that some of them are local. Thompson being a local, I'm local. Heck, I'll probably be there, too. It's going to be a really fun time, guys. Again, that's Command LA Meetup in the chat. And if you wanted to learn more about the America Summit, there's a Command America Summit for you in there as well. So, yeah, guys, I'm really looking forward to this third place match. Again, this is where the money starts, guys. They're playing for prize pool now. This is going to be really exciting, guys. So, Stoic, I asked Seppi mere moments ago. I wanted to hear who you favor between apps and props. Uh, one of my favorite players throughout all of the summit has been Apps. Apps comes in and he, he I, I love the comment from Seishio yesterday, you know, he's playing like he's late for dinner. And uh, I, I'm expecting to see something similar right now. I think Apps is definitely in a great position where he can bust out that same team. But it, do not forget about uh, Fadas' ability to be adaptive. And he's going to adapt it's to this so draft, true. he's going to draft accordingly. So true, man. He was playing like he had somewhere to be. And if he was going to bring that cleave back for anything, it's going to be right here. But I don't think that for us is going to be necessarily that easy to cleave, Seppi. I mean, we saw a lot of bruise coming out in those games earlier. Yeah. 
and one of the best counter pickers in the world. So maybe he'll pull out something very surprising like he has done in the past. Uh, maybe take something out of Absy's book, like a Molly. The Gio is also really good to interrupt that puppeteer. So I I'm looking to see some unique units coming out. And the last thing is who's going to the LA meetup and chat? If like 10 or more people say they're going, I'm going. You know? Excellent. That's exactly what I want to hear. Let's get Seppi at the LA meetup. Here we go, guys. We're going to round one of the third place match between Frost and Apps. Stoic, Seppi, take it away. Yeah, now I'm very right. curious to see if Apse is going to win because Faraz says in chat, if Apse wins, he's exposing his dirty secret. I'm curious now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely exposing that dirty secret. The greatest part about this third place finish, it's going to cover dinner. So whoever wins this is going to have a dinner covered for sure. That's going to be fantastic to see. Three bands getting locked out right here. And it looks like, whoa, Water Puppeteer is going to get free banned in Tian Lang by no surprise. I really like that pre-ban on the Water Puppeteer. Very high base speed unit that freezes, resets, super interesting. Is the first pick going to be Oliver? Well, it's already answered. Or the Water Ryu? No, the question is stoic. Does he split the difference or does Apsay just go with a Maximilian Cleave and I going fast? <laughs> we want to see it. We want to see it, right? <laughs> it, it's already it's already part one of it. I mean, we got the Wool Young, we got the uh, Wind Robo in here. I think Apps doesn't want to show too many cards already and try to you know put a little bit of mystery into his draft. We can see the Wind Robo, Fire Robo, and Escher. So clearly, Escher is stating that you know Fadas does want to go turn one. I really like this answer. The Escher with a very high base speed and the Fire Robo worked really well for him on the other match. So we're gonna see if that comes out. Also another small detail, the Maximilian, so triple dark units and now a 33% speed lead. Faraz says, I want to go first. I don't care the Etna to threaten, you know, sniping someone right off the bat, stunning them and rendering them useless. Yeah, Faraz really saying that he also wants that turn one. Double 33 speed lead, Etna Eshir. Those are just very, very fast units, very fast speed leads as well. Uh, I I don't know where where app should be at here. I guess the the ban would be on top of this Athna, but then you're still giving a fine draft to to Faraz here, right? Uh, would it be interesting to bring a counter pick right here or something that interrupt? What I did not expect this come out. Please, Sandra, this is amazing. Well, Cena, it's not the first time we've seen a Chandra. Ever since Chandra got buffed in the 24 speed lead, yeah. uh, we've been seeing more and more Chandra, and I do believe we saw it in last year's SWC as well. Fire Robo is going to get the ban here. So what we're seeing is three 33 speed leads and two single target units uh, that are me meant to be very, very fast in the form of Escher and Ethna. I think what, what Apps is saying here is there's just not a lot of volatility for Faraz. Like, yeah, he's going to get his turn one stuff off, but the, the volatility, I guess, is only in the form of uh, Oliver popping off and Ethna trying to do something to something. Interesting. The thing is, he takes out one of the units that is going to strip everyone, so he guarantees that something gets through because now the Oliver can only reset one of his units and the other one's already down anyways. Yep, well, that's definitely going to be Very. a reset uh, Chandra as well. Ooh, the attack bar reduction and stuns going out on top of the Oliver. Oliver really needed a proc here. We needed to see some potential... I don't know how this, it's built on Swift. Uh, with the defense breaks coming out here, he is able to remove yeah. one of the units from the field. So I don't know, Apps needs to remove a unit from Fadas' field and he's almost there. The thing is that the PSAM is gonna come out with big damage later on because he doesn't have reset on his side. That's why I'm still unsure about that, wow. that last pick. Maybe a reset would have been really good to try to get the PSAM off the board. You know, a Gany, something like that on Swift to try to outspeed and surprise. But now it's too much damage from Viraz's side. Very interesting drafts. Yeah, well done, Faraz. It worked out having that Ethna and Eshir coming out for Faraz. I'm, I'm expecting uh, the pre-ban for Apps here to be one of those units, the Eshir, or probably the Ethna to get pre-banned by, by Apps. Good point, because he, he has the first, or you said he doesn't like picking Oliver, right? Maybe he wants to pre-ban Oliver so Faraz doesn't get that extra 33. Potentially, I, is is it Apps right now with the first pick? I, I already lost track who has first pick here. But if Apps does have the first yeah. pick, he would be taking that Oliver away. 
Yeah? Okay, then he's probably pre-banning one of those units. And then, mm -hmm. oh, pre-banning the fire robo. Robo. I never thought I was going to see the day, Evan. Double robo pre-ban. Did you picture this? Never I thought. Never gargoyles. thought I'd see the fire robo. Getting pre-banned. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a uh, that's pretty funny to see the double robo ban. I love that. And there's the third yeah. one to follow wow. up. Wow, the, so the priority draft on these units. Like, who would have thought robos would be getting so much? Oh, just stop oh, it! Yes. Us, stop Please, it. Please, <laughs> just draft it. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just want to say something. Uh, I really wanted Chandra to have worked out, but I just didn't get it last draft. So, Absey, please bring an even you know, m more unexpected unit this draft right now to surprise us all, but I know the max million's coming out. <laughs> now, I will also say something on that as well. Uh, somebody out there, please show love to the water robo. Like, just, just show, I don't know, <laughs> six stars, skill it up, get, make it feel love because it is not one of the loved robos here. It looks like Apse now got the draft they wanted. Very comfortable. The TL lane comes out. The question right now is, do you ban that or do you ban the high, the big speed lead over here? Oof, well, doesn't matter here because Oliver is definitely going to get the ban. Yeah. Triton's going to get the ban as one of the fastest units on this field. 28 speed lead for Apps. Apps looking to get turn one, and he should technically be getting turn one. It really depends how fast this segment Ethna is. Oof, <gasps> the Ethna's faster than this segment. <laughs> Very, very fast and that can he's done. Does he go for the puppeteer or for the wall? Yeah, that's the real question. Whoa, Ooh, it didn't get no dice on the second skill. Yikes. This is a big problem. Gets the double freeze also on the end. Now freezing the wind unit. And now the Robo is going to have a field day with the Maximilian coming out. We all came to see the cleave from Apsay. He's late for dinner and here it comes. Yeah, look at all this damage. It's like after you see all those hits come out there, you forget about that last big hit there. It's just absolutely insane. Attack up Wind Rub with a third scale, dealing so much damage. Violent procking from the Maxi, cleaving his way for a round two victory apps. Wow. Even though Faraz got the outspeed, he couldn't lock down someone with that. Now try to go for skill two. Would you have gone for skill two or three, Evan? I would have gone for skill three because I think the Tian Lang was the was the hindrance there. I, I think Tian Lang accidentally wor worked against him and denied attack bar. Uh, sometimes you forget that Tian Lang makes it into a game. You know, you're sure he's going to get banned in most situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're so used to doing that and getting the free turn to then with that damage guarantee that you get someone below, you know, the percentage to to get the stun. But yeah, Tian Lang against his own master. Maybe that yes, absolutely knew again, that all yeah. along. <laughs> yeah, definitely hindsight's 2020 in a, in, a, in a case like this for sure. Ethna's third skill definitely could have went out there and stunned up that water puppeteer. Stunning up the water puppeteer actually got the reset onto a segment as well. So maybe the targeting could have been a little uh, little bit better in that match here. But we'll see what happens because Faraz, like I said, really good at adapting. And uh, I think this is where we're going to see the best of both players here as we get into round number three. I agree. Maybe this time he likes the core of the draft, but won't bring the TL Lang or still brings it. Oh, unique mm, Nora. picks right here. Knowing the volatility on the other side, a lot of squishy units, brings down the Juno, and now a lot of damage over time. Yeah, I really like the Juno draft here with the Nora being picked here. Nora kind of acts like Rika-esque with a, with a strip, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, and you use a Juno to help counter a, a Nora, but he took that Nora. He took the Juno after taking the, the Nora as well. I would love a PSAM last pick right here, but what a pater. This is very surprising. Uh, the Samath would be so nice coming back in, but I know there's one reset. Um, the, la the last pick right here is going to be very decisive. Does he bring more sustain? <gasps> it is the PSM. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, locking in an additional speed lead for Apps here with the, that last pick, uh, uh, Samath coming out. Faraz, I feel like might be in a position to get rid of either that very fast uh, water puppeteer or potentially just the uh, the max to million for a longer, uh, longer match. Good point. Who are you afraid the most, the reset or the damage? Uh, doesn't have heals, so maybe this is the max. No, it is the Nora, the respect. Wow, bans out the Nora speed leads for both players. Definitely expecting Apps to take turn one with that 33 speed lead mm -hmm. in that very fast water puppeteer. Can he get the resets? Wow. No, it's still the end. 
Oh Still the Ethna. I, I, I don't even know how fast this Ethna is. This is an <laughs> insanely fast Ethna. Amazing rune, Spear Raz. Beautiful draft, and this time he goes for this kill three, not giving a chance. Right now, can the Juno strip? Got the dots right here, and no dice to kill the Max. Maybe it's dead right now. Still no. Can he kill it before it comes back up, Stoic? Yeah, Fras is in very good positioning right now. If he can get rid of the Maximilian, that's going to remove a lot of volatility mm -hmm. on the side of Apps' uh, field here. And he still has the Ethna. And even this uh, uh, Water Ryu is going to be applying a lot of damage uh, through additional damage with that second skill. Things looking very good for Fras right now. Ooh, that is a good proc. He's going to go bye-bye, but at least get some damage in. So when p -Sam dies, can, can he kill a couple units? I don't know if yet now would die to, to a Samath coming back uh it, potentially we'll see what happens obviously okay. Pater's gonna have something to say about it you know as he gets more turns mm -hmm. here we'll see what happens but i think Fras definitely needs to start re removing as many units from the field probably leaving that samath to the end yeah that's a really good point i really like the the samath later on if he can stay alive for a couple more turns oh he just tries to kill it right now to get rid of it yep he wants it off the field as quickly as possible doesn't transform back and now he's gonna finish up the puppeteer. Yeah, there's that little bit of sustain you're gonna see there with this patter. Patter, I, I mm -hmm. think he's in great position right now. If he honestly skill twos, kills the Samad, I think this mm -hmm. is when he has to do it. And there it is. You can see the uh, passive popping off here. Everybody's oh. still alive. Oh. And I think that's what nails it right now. Fadas is definitely gonna get this victory here. Yeah, that was a lot of damage, but not enough, Stoic. Very interesting draft. Okay. I think the Etna caught everyone off guard we never thought that with the 33 percent on the other side and the 120 base speed she would take turn one but well i guess for us is farming a lot of giants he really yeah, is he's really, really done quick for us wow for us our third place in the tiebreaker game what a match against apps and it should be noted that these two are friends too apps was even dropping for us emotes in the chat right before this as well guys so these guys know each other pretty well and if you guys want to know all the hot stuff about that etna's rune quality then you should stay tuned to the next world Game podcast probably what for would want me to say though he'd probably want me to abbreviate it awesome job to both players that was awesome stoic what'd you think of that game uh, I'm sorry, uh, what, what podcast was it again? I missed that. Oh, it was uh, the, the World Arena podcast? The, the, oh, the World oh the world Arena podcast, that is right, which can be found, uh, uh, I'm sure if you, you PM them anytime, you'll, you'll get it. Uh, what an incredible match. It was a great showing uh, for Apps, who has also been a guest on the World Arena podcast as well. Uh, you could definitely see him in any of those videos. Um, but it really was a fantastic show, and I think this is a great showcase of where you watch two players who know each other very, very well, where they were bouncing back and forth with whatever they're trying to draft there, uh, you know, taking stuff from one another, and even the pre-bands here. It was a fantastic showcase. We did get to see a good cleave in a round two from Apps there, and that was, uh, you know, the bread and butter, and it's always nice to see that go off. Yeah, and Seppi, this I heard you call out a piece on a pick way early on. What did you think of Apps' adjustment? Oh, I wish it worked out. It was very close, but it was a beautiful draft from both sides. I, I think they, like you said, Stoic, they know each other so well. They just wanted to put on a show for all of us. So if anyone wants to learn how to play really high level RTA, both of these guys are streamers. Go to their streams, watch how they think, how they build their monsters. We just saw a master class in pick and banning, you know, choosing which monsters to attack. And I'm only sad about one thing. That is the only thing that I wanted to get from this. and. We didn't, which is Apps' secret. Firaz said his secret is safe for now. So only thing I'm sad about is <laughs> mm, <laughs> Still awaiting a reveal later down the line. The prophecy has yet to be foretold. So if those of you, uh, for those of you watching on Twitch, both Apps and Firaz are in chat right now. So be sure to give them a follow uh, while we go through this today. And guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at the journey that we've been on thus far in the America's, the America's Summit North American sector. We got our bracket coming up here now updated to show with the, the winner of the tiebreaker match and the grand finals that we can be expecting. That's the next thing that we're going to be going into. We just came out of the semifinals in the tiebreaker match to decide our third place. And now we get to watch Thompson versus Matrim D. 
truly a dream matchup for the finals. I can't think of a better way to end the first 2023 America Summit for the USA and Canada segment. This is going to be awesome. Now, both of these players are already our first and second place. So that means that they're going to be fighting up against Medushi and Zezas uh, at the finals later down the line. But today we still get to have the fun speculative conversation about who's going to take number one and the big slice of the prize pool. Seppi, who do you favor between these two? Evan, I think that is the best part. This is just an amuse-bouche, you know? This is the beginning of the fun. We're gonna have the big finals with the four best players later on, but right now, what I wanna see is just speed. Once again, I wanna see Thompson bringing out the Nefties. I wanna see Madrim be showing off his Swift sets. So I wanna see turn one, see who's the fastest, and then they can adapt, you know, and play with each other. Um, another fun thing would be to see Robo Gaming. Once again, we've Robo seen gaming would be double great. free band robos and double robos coming out, triple robos. What about you, Stoic? What do you want to see? There's definitely some potential for some robos coming out here in this draft. These are very, very good four styles in the meta right now. I do think we're going to see uh, uh, some heavy LD play probably from both of these players where we got to see the likes of, uh, of course, the Dakoni Musha, Nikki coming out as well from a Dream D. Uh, we've seen lots of Neftis play, which is definitely a unit that I think Thompson likes to lean on in the back end there as like locking additional speed lead among a Pontos and even Gianna here. There's just so much to worry about uh, when you're playing up against someone like Thompson. Almost, honestly, a lot to worry about when you're playing up against someone like Mundream to you. Um, I would like to think that, um, you know, what what could you possibly ban when you're playing up against um, someone like Thompson with so many LDs in that box there? Like, what do you worry about mm -hmm. the most? Is it, you know, the LDs with the speed leads or is it just straight up units like Gianna or even Ragdoll as well? There's a lot that Thompson has. Yeah, yeah we choose? haven't like, seen the, even Ragdoll. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we haven't yet. That's so funny because by this point in the tournament on Friday, we would have seen Ragdoll at least appear in a pre-band at, at this point. So that's that's pretty fun that we haven't gotten a chance to see him just yet. Yeah, Thompson when he went when he went into that game that sent Apps into the tiebreaker round, he was doing some pretty targeted bands, stealing units and everything. I'm, I'm very curious to see if he's just as ready for the Madream D matchup in the finals because you know this one's a little bit harder to predict going into it that you're going to be fighting yeah. them, Hasep. Huh, to be honest, I think that Stoic is totally right. Both of them have so many units, so many powerful LDs that it doesn't matter what you pre-ban, they will still have a very strong comp to bring over and be super scary. So I think the name of the game will be Adaptation. Whichever one of the two manages to counterpick the best and adapt to the strategy that the other one's putting out is gonna be the winner. Because right here, we see very similar rune and artifact quality. We're not gonna see those matchups where one of them has oracles that hit for 3K and the other one has oracles that hit for 2K. We're gonna see two players that are very strong, have farmed for a long time, and both of them have won championships. Well, let's see what happens here, guys, as we get into our grand final match between Thompson and Madreemd. With the 24 speed lead being locked in by Madreemd, already locking in Water Ryu, potentially bringing in and locking in the Juno and Wind Robo. So we are going to see a little bit of Wind Robo play here and just a full LD draft coming out of Thompson. This is normal, <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah, this is actually, it looks funny, but it's a very strong comp. The Ragdoll is a direct counter to both AoE strips, and now a lot of damage to try to get rid of that Juno that was countering the Gianna. Now we're going to see, does Madrindi bring, I want to see an Abelio. Do I need to keep asking for it? No reset on that type. The Pontos oh. comes out, which is very interesting because there's only one strip on the table so far, and another Robo Stoic. Honestly, it's a brilliant Pontos pick here because I think Pontos would have been a 24 mm -hmm. speed lead that Thompson was going to be looking at. And the, the early Juno pick says, I don't want to see the Neftis. And even Thompson's in a position right now of potentially drafting a Neftis, but not drafting a Neftis. That would actually state if he bans out the... the, the oh! What? Hold on. Just That tells it's... me a Pontos ban. Oh, he did it? <gasps> Oh I, my god. All right, we're going to see Ada getting drafted here as round <laughs> in the fifth pick as a last pick. Oh, this is so interesting. We can see a Wind Robo get banned out here. 24 speed lead with 30 speed lead for the DAC units on the side of Thompson. This is, uh, yeah, let, let's get into it, guys. This is the grand final match, round number one with Thompson and Apps. How do we kill this Artemio? You gotta stun it, my friend, because he's gonna be hitting super hard. The Pontos has no will. That's one good thing to counter this guy. Well, there's dots, there's additional damage. He can protect himself with the invincibility. He's got some cleansing out there. So there's a lot to, to handle the out of here. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see how Madrimi handles it. He's gonna have to put the attack break. Oh, I was gonna say the attack break onto the Han. Besides, not to do so. Right, the Han. Oh, but gets a stun on the Han and a stun on the Arda. Can he go for the silence right now to not take too much damage? But goes for the holy ground. We know the oh useless part. Yeah, definitely had to go for holy ground. He knew that Narship was gonna oh. devastate a unit. Anyways, the Wind Robo <laughs> removed from the field very quickly. Yeah, that's why I wanted to see the silence so that Narsha couldn't strip and destroy someone. But, well, someone's dead either way. Once again, this Artemiel will keep just hitting and hitting back. And the silence finally comes and hits on all four. Yeah, and he has the silence on all four units. Or else Thompson was going to be using that skill, too, to heal up that Han. Uh, that's not what's going to happen. I think he has to probably go for a strip here, to be honest with you. Gets a Despair Stun on top of the water, which is really big. But I do think Madrimi can drop the Han and does so. Another Despair Stun is going to come out on top of Juno there. But Juno's going to be able to heal up, so it kind of benefits Madrimi just a little bit. No other Despair Stun's coming out here. Oh, man, Arda devastates that water for you. <laughs> I think it's gonna come down to Arda versus Juno in a little bit. Let's see if this Narsha gets the proc to try to finish someone. The Juno hitting super hard, dropping her, and she needs to get some damage in, and that's big damage, my friend. Yeah, well, this is a really good holy ground here. That invincibility is gonna be absolutely perfect. I think the additional damage has to keep going right into this Arda. He's able to heal himself up, <laughs> looking really low for Juno right now. This Narsh is gonna deal so much damage. He can go for the Silent if he wants, but this is still a crazy amount of damage coming towards this Juno. The Juno is not gonna live this. Thompson is definitely gonna be taking round one away from Madreambe. Who would have thought? Arda 2023 gameplays, my friend. Beautiful last pick from Thompson. So much sustain over there. Very tanky unit that just kept stripping and stripping. I mean, sorry. Yeah, it's just a lot effect. of Remove damage. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> It's just, it's a, it's a lot of damage as well, but also it's that, that first one, uh, um, a beneficial effect removal uh, uh, with that first skill coming out of, coming out of Ada. So it, it was a really good last pick for, for, for Thompson. I, I think it, there could have been better, but you know what? When, when it works out like that, I mean, who, who can say that there's a, there's a better draft when he wins the match with it, so. Right? You know, hey. <laughs> and Madrindi taking out the Ragdoll. I really like that pre-ban. He knows he can't play against it because he loves so many units that hit AoE. He probably has some crit rate on them. The chance of the other team cutting in. So now let's see if he can get his full comp with Robo's double speed lead and try to fight Thompson. That is already picking up a 33%. Evan, well, there's what a is the big sign right wants? now. Oh. No, 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 it's okay, it's good. Uh, uh, I'm just saying, there's a, there's a really big sign right now. When you see that Juno getting banned out here, you can almost guarantee Neftis is hitting the field. And I was oh, just yeah, about to call the that. Dark Onimusha because of the, the impact that that last pick on Artemio has. That's the sort of thing that locks in on your game memory, so you want to bring something that counters it, even if it's not on the table mm -hmm. yet. That's a really good point, Avid. Will we, will we see a puppeteer over here? Or so far he just needs very fast units like an Eshir, a Netna, the Sekhmet, someone like that to try to outspeed this 33 and the 30%. I think Madrimi is going to draft something very, very fast here. Or potentially bring out another Nana and go for like some uh, turn 2-esque draft where he's going to try and out-survive. But it looks like he's going to go down the out-speed route. We're going to see the Ethna mm -hmm. hit the field, which is known to be very, very fast. And 224 speed leads. So right now, Madrimbi has both his speed leads locked in with great synergy for his team here. I think Madrimbi has to bring another, uh, uh, like a fluff damage unit here to help capitalize on this Dako Emotion. But Pontos hits the field with the Water Puppets here, and we're not going to see an uh, Neftis here. Yeah, very, very interesting. Ooh. Ooh. My girl, Seime? Right? Here. right? <laughs> Seime over here. Do you think he bans the damage <laughs> on Thompson's side? Or does he try to just go for the outspeed once again? Well, with the Seime pick here, that Seime is strictly here for the Ponto. So that means Pontos mm -hmm. goes through. And Seime, mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, unless Seime is the ban knowing that his Pontos goes through. We'll find out. I mean, Han's gonna get the I like the ban on the Ethnic damage. Field. Yeah. I really like the bans right here. I think both of them ban the right units. The question right now will come down to how fast is this Chi Wu? Because I haven't seen a Chi Wu in a while. So I'm expecting it to be super fast. The puppeteer is actually way faster, my friend. 
Yeah, with the 33 speed lead as well, Fuckdeer being very, very fast. He needs to get that reset, and I, it does get, it does land on top of that Chiba, which is pretty big right now. Yeah, very, very interesting. And now he gets the strips and stun, and the Oliver is gonna reset people. Oh my god. Yeah, this nothing is a happens really though to that nice Dark start. Onimusha. I think he has to go with either a skill too, or potentially just holy ground it. But mm -hmm. Chibu, keep in mind, does have that third skill up now. Unless, of course, he can get a reset. <laughs> yeah, I think he played it very well, very safe. He keeps going for the attack bar reductions. He doesn't want to stun that Onimusha because we know it hits super hard. We want to kill him before he takes any turn or gets stunned. Can he deal enough damage right now, finally protecting the team with the Holy Ground? Yeah, that's a fantastic Holy Ground now because he's in a position of where he could probably get rid of this Dark Onimusha before even seeing a strip coming out of this Chibu as well. Oliver and that Dark would definitely have something to say about it. A lot of damage coming out. That was a very important proc to keep him alive, but the proc from Oliver the way back, I don't know if that's something you want to see. Once this Onimusha's dead, it's gonna be really difficult for Madreemdi to come back into it. Well, he finally got the dots to land. Nothing was actually landing on top of the stack of Onimusha. Now more damage is gonna be coming in here, and I think he definitely needs to silence this unit. If he gets the silence on top of the Dark Onimusha, I'm not too sure Madreemdi has anything left in the tank to bounce back. Yeah, I think those dots are, is that 10%? Is that enough? Ooh, Ooh big proc from Samit. Yeah, definitely a big proc indeed. I mean, there's no healing just yet coming towards this because of Seime, but there goes the Dark Onimusha. He is going to be dropping here, and we're looking at a really low Water Ryu, and I think that's... I, I mean, Madreemdi needs both his Water Ryu and his Shiwu to stay up here, and he's going to lose one of these units very quickly. Yeah, the amount of damage on the field is not going to be enough. Tries to push back. The Water Ryu is going bye-bye, and with this very commanding lead for Thompson, Excellent pick with the Dark Robo dominating right here with a very clutch stun on turn one. No damage coming towards the Seimei. Seimei usually is a very good answer when you see units of the likes of this Dark, uh, uh, dark Robo, but Seimei ended up not being that great of an answer, even though the third path, the, I guess the third skill or the passive of Seimei helps the Holy Ground really not have such great effect on this field here. But maybe, Se as much as I like Seimei, maybe Seimei wasn't the answer here. Yeah, good point. It was an interesting pick. Very creative, though. And the, the Chiwu, I, I also think that was something that, I don't know, maybe it couldn't do what it was supposed to do. It's a unit that had the 24% speed lead, but it didn't even come close to outspeed the Puppeteer. The Puppeteer was so much faster. Maybe picking a segment with the speed lead, uh, another unit, you know, since he knew that the Etna was probably going to get that. Yep, let's see here, there's more damage coming out from Madreem. He's just kind of, uh, I guess, enjoying his time right here because there's just no way that he comes back from this one. And Thompson takes round two and his victory over Madreem. Look Thompson now number one from the North American sector of the America's Summit. But again, if you like both of these players, you like watching them fight, you'll get to see more because as are number one and number two, they're going to be joining Zezas and Madushi at the finals that are coming later today. Guys, what a great game. I thought Thompson perfectly navigated that Dark Oni Musha. He really knows how to juggle a tough situation there, Sefi. Yeah, very, very good strategy. Was extremely careful. Knew when to push back and then wait to use the Holy Ground. Didn't rush. Super patient and very methodical gameplay right here. Took it down and then just in the 4v3, even after he lost one of the units, he had so much tankiness and a lot more damage over time and artifact damage to just whittle down the opponent and take it with a 2-0. Oh man, and even at the end there, you were seeing the damage that Dark Robo put out there, Stoic. I'm telling you, like the additionals, we're talking about it. Thompson cannot be underestimated in any situation. No, oh, never. You can never under, uh, underestimate Thompson here. Like, just as good as his rune quality is, it's just as good as that, his ad effects are. And I think everyone probably is still in the position of you can always find better and more ad effects here, but you can almost guarantee that Thompson has high quality, whether it's one or the other. Oh, totally. Yeah. So those are the games of the bracket today, but we still have a two versus two game coming up here. Now, Seppi, you and I, I think, are going to be playing two versus two together. Uh, the room what? info is in, am? is in the group chat. Wait, 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 let me... Wait, hey, wait, wait, yeah, just <laughs> come in, guys, check that room info, guys, get in, baby. You guys keep everyone... 
because we're going to be fighting. So if you, and we're going to be fighting together soon. And if you in chat think that you can be around the Los Angeles area, then you could potentially be fighting in a tournament coming up soon. I want to remind everybody to use Command LA Meetup if you're in chat to register for the Los Angeles Meetup that's happening on April 22nd. If you haven't gotten the chance to stop by one of these things yet, make this be the one. The LA Meetup is always so much fun. It's going to be at Tom's Watch Bar. Again, that's April 22nd. Hope so to see y'all there. So, question about Stoic. this 2v2 thing, Evan. Quick question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Am I playing with Thompson, against Thompson? Heck not, no, right? you're playing with me. Wow, nice. Let's see how Get this em. goes. Get him, guys. <laughs> I think you guys are going to do great. Like, even though it's Thompson and that he just won uh, his spot in Summit, like, Listen, Seppi, Evan, I can't I can't say two people that I am more confident in than you two right now. Thank you. I appreciate the utmost confidence that you have in us there, Stoic. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to need it. We're going to need it because I can't help but okay, notice that yeah, Thompson's in here. That's really scary. We're going to train for the meetup. Wait, can, can we trade teams? You know, I think my comp fits Thompson a little bit better, Evan. I think that's... Chat, what do you think? In which team should I be on? Um, <laughs> let's see. Are you trying to betray oh. me right now, my guy? What? No, I wouldn't do that. Wait, why cause, friend? I just in, I just invited you, Seth. I just invited you, Seth. I just want to put out here that this is the fakest C2 player of all time. Why cause it's not C2. Don't get tricked into this chat. <laughs> <laughs> don't get okay. tricked, he's not C2. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't believe what it's saying. Why cuz, why cuz is definitely a red star, several red star players. <laughs> so, oh multiple red stars against the humble, it, the humble it, people on this if side. If you talk to why cuz, he's as, as conquer as conquer gets. I love the face that you have here, Evan. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dude, I'm like, wait, <laughs> we're up against two? <laughs> this is my face. So That's the face, face I have, have right now. <laughs> Okay, okay, I, I want to see if chat, is... Evan, wait, wait, one yes. second. I want to see if chat really likes us. Chat, who are you rooting for right now? And I don't want you to say who you think is going to win because I know we all think this. Uh, just tell us who you're rooting for. Stoic, <laughs> take it away. For... I'm going to focus right here. I'm going to ignore. We have the benefit of a third head. Three heads are better than one and two. So, Stoic, I want your okay. input on some of this stuff. Who am I? Oh, Dude, you your more is way better I'll, I'll than mine. Pick a Masha. Yeah, no, no. Leave, leave me more right here. By the way, you get uh, to don't hear the picks, live like strategy between Evan and Seppi. This is going to be absolutely phenomenal here. We've got the Masha getting locked down by Evan, and I do love the Masha. I think Masha is an excellent unit to be taking away from Y Cousin Thompson. Keep in mind, Y Cousin loves the Miles. I think Miles might be hitting the ground right now. So be ready to see something like that, especially in a place where Leo is not a viable unit you can even draft here. So Miles is going to be pretty devastating. <sighs> going up against Masha and potentially other units. Oh, God. Oh, God. What an we don't have Oliver. <laughs> None of us have Oliver, by the way, so we can't <laughs> even steal it. Don't tell them that, dude. Why are you, why are you they know. giving away our size? <laughs> we have Oliver. I have Oliver. You guys, careful. It's coming out as a last pick. Watch Chat, out. I've got three Olivers. <laughs> Oh, Expect no. two more Evan. LD Nat 5s coming out of Thompson. Just keep um, ready for that. Might be a, uh, a, a Han coming. Potentially. Riley, Riley, Riley Evan. Evan. Bring, bring a Riley, bring a Riley, and then something like an Abelio. Praha? Do you have an no Abelio rune? Oh I yeah, Praha's good too, but I like an Abelio better. Yeah. I'll stick with Abelio the then, we'll do that. Thank you. I think Abelio is a great draft here. A lot of sustain for Evan. This is definitely something you guys are gonna need after getting, you know, the onslaught of Y Cousin Thompson. So <laughs> sustain is a good thing here. <laughs> this is definitely something you guys are gonna need, bro. Yeah, right? Oh, <laughs> oh, I feel like this uh, this caster has, you know, some type of... Evan, should I bring something completely unexpected? I think that's the only only chance. That's the only I, thing I, that I agree really with do. that 100%. If you bring something they're prepared for, Seppi, uh, never mind, it just doesn't look good. I, I really like the, the wind druid. I think the, I think the wind druid's I a fantastic like draft here. I'm expecting... Oh, I'm getting prize. Oh, he's gonna say, should I bring Tetra or Veramos, dude? I got you, I got you. My Tetra, no, my Tetra. Oh, for the love of God, don't bring Veramos. Veramos is I'm not gonna bring Veramos. Gurkha is really still a them. very good unit when it comes to 2v2. I think Gurkha is Are you sure, Evan? Something unit. tank here, something tank here. Oh, uh, just, something... oh that's not tanky. No. My, do, I could do, I could do Dom. God, not a Kalos. I could do, <laughs> Dom, not Carlos. I like Dom. The Dom. Let's the Dom. do Dom. The Dom. 
I like nerf Dom. Dom. Slightly nerf Dom. Whoa. Oh, this um, is I will give you ban targets right now. The Dark what Cookie about cannot Yon? stay on the field. Dark Cookie cannot Yon, stay on the field. I'm sorry. Yon I don't like death breaking the invincibility. Or Dark Cookie. You Yon know what? Let the Dark Cookie through and then you can realize your mistakes later. That works too. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll ban the Pontos. I just don't want to see the Pontos in here. I think should I trust? We don't have I trust Sto uh, Let me trust Stoic because it's the defense break. Trust Stoic. If we lose, we have someone to blame. It's not the rules. Oh, that's it's brilliant. Not they're smarter than us. It's Stoic. You know, you're like genius. That. All right, Stoic. Wait, that's a lot of brain. So for if that, you guys lose, friend. it's 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 my fault if you lose. Yes, yes you heard 100%. that exactly the way we wanted you to interpret. So if you let the Dak cookie through and then you lose, what? All right. It's it, okay. <laughs> then it would have been my fault. See? Then it would have been my fault. Thank you for saving me. Yes, Roger. Okay, <laughs> you know I'll, take, I'll take full fault for this. Here we go, guys. We've got Seppi versus Waikazamaji and our current champion of today, Thompson. We've got a wild match ahead of us. Stay tuned because this Blade fan comes out, gets the big strip, boosts up his team, and now we've got something to worry about. We've got a third skill happening with this Vivid Show. We're not. Clutch, hey, he could have clutch healed me. He could have healed me. <laughs> oh my god, Evan. He, he's dealing a lot of damage. Where's the Abelio? Coming out. He's here, yes. baby. All heal, right, I'm going to I'm going to boost heal. and heal. Yes, please. Great heal right there. You know Fantastic what? provoke. Landing on the only cleanse on the other side of the field, might I add. So that's a great place for that provoke to land. We've got this Dominic staying as thick as possible staying back. alive right now. Oh, nice and I made a beautiful nice despair kill, stun. Yon Hung? Yon Hung? What do you think? Yes. And Brock. Let's go. Beep, beep. Brocking is very oh, important. Massive yes. damage with the additional turn go as well. Dominic landing the branding, staying Brock alive, again. looking thicker than a snicker right now. <laughs> you didn't want the heal on. Uh, the uh, uh, Abelio, probably? I think, the... I think Abelio would be nice. No, He's no, 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 no. Actually, no. Actually, no. Because he it's relies okay, on It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We'll because be fine, we'll be fine. Great form. damage, so great targeting from Evan and Seppi. Oh, that's really done, trying to bro. get rid of this, oh, so this same A. Getting healed, I'm sorry, getting healed by the again. same A. It was good damage, beautiful stuns there though. Lands that stun on top keep of going the for her. She's the damage. I really only have stun, I only have stun. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, you're I'm gonna, I'm a G's side of the field. You have Glancy, oh. you have Glancy. Yeah, nice. I'm just gonna turn back, so that way I've got passive again. Wow, it's they big hit damage very from hard, that first kill coming from Viva. Very been, hot there. We've been on the back foot for a while. We've been on the back foot for some time now. You, you've you been on the back foot since the draft. Thank <laughs> you, Kill the young one, Evan. Kill the young one. I'm trying, bro. <laughs> Dom got God. a little nerfed, okay? What are you doing, dude? I asked you to kill the young one. Oh, um, oh I'm going to cleanse Harry. you, but he can't. Uh, I'm going to try to stun him again. You Check this out. I'm gonna use it is a nice attack and then I'm on top of the Gurkha though. Really good here. Riley's gonna be cleansing his team, Proc? boosting up. We got yes. a oh, yes. on top of this Dominic as well. I Thank think we're you. looking pretty good. Beautiful immunity being placed on on Evans Pat here. Oh, no. Seppi definitely gonna be protecting mm. them from this Gurkha. Gurkha does land the two turn defense break and provoke on top of the Riley. Not Man, looking good really. at all. Third skill is available. Swapping the life total there with the uh, the attack bar with this Riley. Oh, Riley's gonna be in very oh, Bad situation up and killed uh, by this why, Nexus. Evidence why Seppi you now down sir? by a unit. We, we got revived. It does good. Proc Evan, my Abelio, next bro. Up, you should have tried to cleanse because you don't have to protect my side. I got a Tetra. We're good. Yeah, that's a good point. My side. Oh, nice oh that's a beautiful um, proc here. Looking at a stun and not going to be happening. I mean, I feel like Seppi's in a position of. Okay, I guess we're Thank going you. for a provoke now. Gets double two provoke. provokes, though, which go. is really big. Beautiful double provoke. The nice little spare stun going Gurkha. out. Should I just go on, on, on Gurkha? Gurkha? Yes. Kill I only have skill one. Something. I only have skill one. Uh, Evan, good not damage, rocking there to remove that unit from the field, though. We're going to see the second skill cleanse going out on top of the Neftis. Evan, the same A combo with the Gurkha is amazing. They are. <laughs> Can I He's stun? He's hard carry, though. Nope. Yeah, my, my they'll just keep dead. reviving me while they focus. It'll be it'll be fine. Oh, you, I wish. I wish. I shouldn't have said something like that. Maybe they're watching. Yes. Why? Cause say <laughs> hi in chat if you're watching. <laughs> they're definitely oh not God. watching. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, the 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 Yon Hong's gonna start to hit very hard, my friend. This Yon Hong's about to that. massacre this Riley. Yeah. Wow, choosing oh not to go God. for Riley and Ooh, doing a ton of dead. damage towards this water, you more. 
second skill comes out on top of Evan's oh team. God. They don't even look to Finally, take it. Finally, but I don't. I'm gonna heal you because I don't, I can't heal, heal my side. Heal me. Cool? Heal me. Yeah. There you go. Thank I'm you. pushing you because I I've got heal block. You're gonna so cleanse I can't you. Heal live right now. Can I proc? You'll to proc into it. Brock? No. You oh, I'm not gonna get a heal off this. What Except a bummer. Wait, oh. wait. He does have the third skill. Yeah. And Riley will cleanse the heal. Oh, but I didn't get the heal block, but I got the death break on Dom, which is nice. Uh, what? You gotta moment. be kidding me, bro. Wow. Can, can we Evan, get a VAR? Very unlucky right now. I feel very unlucky. I feel like okay. Pat transferred his uh, bad RNG <laughs> to me for that one attack. <laughs> oh, no provokes oh gonna be landing. Gets the additional turn anyway. Second skill. No, I'm sorry. First skill gets the two turn provoke that lands on top of the Baleo. That is not at all what Baleo wants to see right now. Evan, the strategy is stun. Yes. That yes. Was oh, double out provoke. Two turn provoke, might I add. Very nice. I'm gonna tell you My something dog. now. I want you to start praying so we I can am. get some good luck over here. I'm gonna try to get stuns. Yes. Double despair mm, stuns though, which is really big. Exactly what Seppi needed to see right now. Oh, There's that oh, third oh, tail no. swap the attack on HP of the Tetra. Tetra looking really, really low. Not even oh, able to survive. No. Charge Vitality is going to go out on top of the Gurkha. All of a sudden, why? Because I'm a G and Thompson looking very healthy. Oh, oh no. emotes don't show up on the... Oh, wait, do they? Wait, I swear I did. Wait, <laughs> why aren't my emotes showing up on stream? Kill that Gurkha, Evan. <laughs> I'm going for it. Wow, that was not a lot I of damage, the crit. my friend. Just stun it. Uh, do you it. want to heal? Do you want to heal and no, boost? No, 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 not just stun it. It's all good. It's all, all right, good. fine. Yep. Yeah, we no need stuns the coming out here. No additional turn coming out of that uh, Laura there. More damage oh, coming no. out. Additional turns coming out from this Neftis. Neftis with the silence going out on top of this uh, um, uh, Tyrannus. We haven't seen a unit like this uh, for about two years now. So it's great that Seppi's trying to bring back full content. I gotta tell you, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm playing this game. I'm watching the game. I can't help but wish this Yan Hong was a dark cookie. And I feel like that'd just be so much better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I got the stun. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Would have uh, definitely <laughs> made a massive change. Here. We'll see what happens as we get as we get into our next round. <laughs> wow. I've been trying to that emote, dude. I am. Oh, I can't heal you, but I can heal me. Friend. So I'm gonna get some provokes. I just want to say, and the chat is perfectly agreeing with us. This is 100% Stoic's fault. We would have been different units, okay? I just we want to put that out there. There's a right? crazy we, uh, strategy, and Let's you can scoop. find this, this skill at the bottom left of your screen. It's, it's insane that uh, Evan and Seppi have not found this new strategy where you draft better and you oh, go into your next it. match. Oh, I found <laughs> it. Evan found Seppi it. I denied it. it. I oh, want okay. to give them. Two out of three. They deserve the best two out of three. Evan, oh, okay, we got this. First thing that I want to say, good job, my friend. You Thank you, you really too, well. dude. Uh, it's always the a pleasure. Even, even, even losing not there, together my is fun. Even, <laughs> even losing there. together is fun. Yeah. For I you and say. I, 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 I love just love you. Uh, uh, we're gonna get, we're getting out. This. You're right about that. So let's go, yeah. let's, let's, let's go RNG this time. Let's like try to cheese it. Uh, RNG? Full no, RNG, no, 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 that's, no. that's exactly you know what we need to Evan, see Evan, what is your fastest unit? Tell me, tell the speed, tell it to the chat. Probably pick Escher, I don't know, dude, but I don't, no, you should be pick, you should be the one picking that. Oh, do you want me to go take Escher. more? Go Escher, pick Escher, first? No, pick Escher. No, no, I trust okay. you. I trust your Are speed. Are you serious? That's, that's what we need. Yeah, you don't trust, trust my speed. speed. How can I trust you? I don't trust my speed. I, I can't give you guys input <laughs> on this match now because I, w I need this one to be your fault, not mine. <laughs> okay, let me no, let me I take the Masha again. Fault. Masha got banned last time. Let me take the Masha and let's go similar. Okay. You take the speed. I think stuff, Masha okay? was a great pick. Because okay. I, I don't think yeah. I can compete with them on speed. But, oh, but really? I don't have the speed <laughs> Oh, really? Look at <laughs> My cuz is watching. What's up, Pat? <laughs> wow. Good game, dude. Evan, then we found out the problem. They have someone on the inside. They know what we're thinking. That's why we lost. That's right. It's not anything else. Dude, Stoic right. is feeding information yep. to them. Along with us. Uh, you know what? Speak. Yep. Evan, they try they want to try and beat us. Okay. So do you have two speed leads you can pick up for me? Um, I only have um I've got more and I do technically have um do I have peace armor? Technically. What do you mean, technically? technically oh, you have technically. a CR on Teppy, you should have drafted the speed leads, man. No, 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 I'm good. My I'm good. Peace Mama's got, got ruined right now, bro. 
We're going. Yeah, you keep. Oh wait, I got Evan. Evan, take take the Samoth anyways. They they won't know that. They'll have to ban out the thirty three speed lead. Pat, pretend you pretend you didn't hear. They won't that. know that. Hey, should I pick? <laughs> yeah. Evan, don't pick it. Should I pick like Josephine one, or Bird or something? I don't know because we're gonna get. No, 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 Evan. We got this. Just get the Water Ryu. And get right. some source of pushback or control, something good. Like what do you Etna, have? Here? No, Edna doesn't. Um, you have a pushback. Savannah. I, I like. The I do have a Savannah. Pick a Savannah. Let's go. She's Is never Edna gonna crit though. Fast. She's ruined on attack. Just so you know, she's ruined on attack, so you're never gonna see her. It's crit. all good. It's all good, my all right, dear cool. friend. Let's pick. Just pick, do you have Ciara ruined, please? No, not currently, but I I, I have Clara, and I can pick a key piece on just missing one rune, but it's slot four. Okay, Stoic, what does the irrelevant. rain do? Slot what four is irrelevant on some map. What, what do you mean, what does what do? That the light, the light cookie. cookie. What does the light cookie do? Am I afraid? It's going to cause you guys to I don't lose your I'm... second match. <laughs> Evan, get the... Sorry, so the PSAM has zero runes? What do we have here with runes? Dude... Should I pick a Douglas? Clara. Oh, no. Are we no, banning no, no, no. Giana? Clara. Get the Clara. Get the Clara. We're all good. Right. Just get the fine, Clara. Fine, fine, fine. It's level 27. Do you sure? Are you sure? It's all good. It's all good. Trust. You we don't want P-Sam if ben. we're going to be doing that? No, no, no. Ban the ragdoll. Just ban the ragdoll. <laughs> we got this. Dude, we're throwing. We're actually throwing. No, okay, no, no. We go. got this. This is going to go you much better. You got this. You're better. confident? By the Wait, way, you're banning a ragdoll? Out... That's the unit you're afraid yeah, yeah, of? Ben. Yes, 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 we are. Just get the speed lead. We got this, my friend. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something. If we get out spam, this is gonna be humiliating because we have speed. No, of course we're gonna get, get out, out spam. Spam. What do you mean if? All right, you, you guys are the only ones with speed finished. leads and the only ones with turn one reunits. There's no way you guys get out spam here. They, or hey, don't do not do that, Caster's hey. Curse. Okay, we, ah, we there spam. it is, Duffy. You are so fast, my friend. Do you see that? Okay, Evan, I'm really sorry, my dude. I thought you were going to Beautiful gonna be choice faster. is going after Y because they're oh, the way Are you going to boost me so my defense break? Or yes, no? I'm going to boost you. He goes strip, strip for the other side. Third, Stun them. Has to go Check towards Thompson. Bop, bop, bop. Doesn't get any stuns whatsoever. Right side, probably reduce. due to a lack of accuracy here. Right side Savannah's or left? Savannah's going to be looking third, left, to attack left. the right side. Your left side? What? Yes, yes, yes. I think he wants Gianna. Why would you? Kill, okay, kill, fine. kill the Gianna. He's going kill left the Gianna. Side. I reset them. Big skill I got him. too. He has to do the right, a third. Yes, it is. Right side, third oh, skill. Resistance. There is some resistance out there, though. Um, I trust you, Evan. You got this, my friend. Stop trusting me. Yep. It puts too much on my shoulders, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, your Masha didn't do damage. Is she on crit damage? She missed one crit. She missed one crit. Okay, Evan's just getting the crushed. Gianna. By the weight <laughs> of responsibility, I'm gonna, oh, right? Now. right, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I'm gonna kill the Gianna. Kill the Gianna, the Gianna, and then I'll good kill to the Yawn. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. You I don't crit though. Oh my that god. Okay. Kill, though. That was good damage. The third skill is gonna come to towards Evan's side of the field, or potentially go towards skill two on on Seppi. Does go for the skill two on oh, Seppi. Not receiving low. any stuns though. Can we kill? Or something like no crit, just... thank god. Oh okay. no, Evan. Uh, can reduce I the cookie, maybe? cookie or kill? No, I yeah, want to kill the Yonha. Kill the Crack is gonna revive somebody, oh. actually. Crack is gonna it's revive. All good. It's all good. No, no, right, you have the fine, you're good because oh, oh, the oh. oh. no. That's the oh, okay, no. getting super lucky. Why? Because I'm actually known as one of the luckiest players in Summer's War. Dropping that <laughs> Masha here, absolutely insane. Uh, just um, <laughs> kill, kill the kill Yon. Yeah, yeah. Just kill. Um, can you like pass it back? To the cookie, I'm gonna death to break Gianna? the cookie. Yes, hit the cookie. Punch the cookie. 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 I don't crit, oh, remember that. Man. I don't crit. Not the I'm kind not of damage we were expecting to see here. That is a very right. caring Savannah. That Savannah cares a lot. <laughs> hey, you complimented her damage mere moments ago. <laughs> Whoa, oh, Asher, nice. putting some serious damage on that dark cookie here. Uh, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, what is this? Why? Because I'm a G, known as one of the luckiest players in Summoner's War. Gets a beautiful additional turn with that Diva Chill. Healing up his team and generally just saving him here. Uh, this is, I just want to say, uh, I haven't been farming dragons in a long time, so this is probably my fault. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs>
Oh, wow. what a big second skill. Seppi's just being removed from the field here. You know what, Evan? I still stand by our strategy. We control them. We did a great job. Two vile procs and a lot of, you know, big brain plays from them just to beat us. Yep. I'll, I'll tell you, it's just why cuz in his violent proc. Why cuz is in his ability to violent proc here just really overweighing a, a Seppi and Evan here. But once again, a very impressive draft coming from Evan and Seppi. It was my fault that they lost the first match, so well done for making it this far. <laughs> It was my fault. You know what's going on? It wasn't your fault. Hey, but my emotes still aren't coming through. I don't know what's going on there. Evan, Sorry, just want to say me. something. I can tell my kids and everyone in chat now that I've outsped Thompson. That's all I want to say. Yes, friends. and that's an achievement. That's an achievement. We, you outsped Thompson. We put up a decent fight. Congratulations to my cousin Thompson. That was so much fun. <laughs> That was awesome, you guys. Are you guys. Amazing. <laughs> that was great. Everybody, Man. this has been such a fun tournament. I couldn't think of a better way to spend the grand finals than casting it with you guys. Seppi, thank you so much for casting and for playing 2v2 and losing with me. It's always so much fun to cast with you, man. Yeah, with both of you. Thank you so much. That beautiful voice from Stoic. And don't forget, <laughs> we're going to see man. you guys for the big finals. The four best players, April 21st, one day before the tour, before the meetup. Meet and Stoic, yeah, it's been an honor, man. We commentated Latin America together, you, me, and Seppi, and now we did the Friday stream and this one too. I feel like you were a part of that 2v2, even though you weren't directly my teammate, man. I did my best to help you guys. Honestly, you had a great showing uh, for the pair of you. It really is fantastic. Seppi, well done. Outspeeding the likes of Thompson. Really is fantastic. You get to share the story with your friends, your family, all 32 children that you have. It's like incredible. So it was awesome to be here with you guys. It's awesome to cast with every one of you. Uh, thank you for having me here. And it has been a fantastic America Summit. Yeah, it really has, guys. So thank you again, and thank you, chat, for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you all here at the finals April 21st. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.